Today, we are here to celebrate a big milestone for us. The last four and a half years, hundreds of people, and now in the meantime, a thousand people have been touching this project. And finally, we are there at the start of production and also soon start of deliveries to the customers. What we tried to do for months is to get as many cars, or actually I wanted to have all of the cars that we use for development together at one spot, which was basically impossible to achieve because we had all the time crash testing, track testing, all kinds of different activities with the cars. It was impossible to get them together. And I said a couple of months ago, on this date, I want them all together. We got 14 of them here in this room, and I'll show you some of the cars here. Unfortunately, we are still missing four because they are in different activities in different countries, scattered around the continent. Uh, but we have most of them here. So some people might think for a hypercar that's produced in low volumes, you don't need a lot of cars. You just build a couple of prototypes and you're done. So I think this is quite surprising to see the number of cars that we have built over the last years to get to this point to start shipping cars to customers. So let's have a little look at the cars that we have here and the differences between them. What we have started with is the Aerobac, as we call it. This was an early model of the car, just um, like a space frame with some aerodynamic elements on the car that can be changed quickly to test it in the wind tunnel with different configurations and different layouts. This was not a real car, but this was used to evaluate the design very early on. Of course, before we built this, we had thousands and thousands of simulations uh, of CFD analysis before we built the Aerobuck and then we came with different variants to the wind tunnel and evolved the design. Then after that came the first rolling cars, the first driving cars, which we call the experimental prototypes. There were three of them and the funny thing is that as we went with the prototype builds, we were building the cars in three different facilities as the company was growing and moving from facility to facility. This was built in our original location in Sveta Nedelja. Um, and we had three of them to survive. Two are still around, but very old status. Then from here, we changed absolutely everything. I think these cars have nothing in common with the next stage of development, which are the six validation prototypes that we have built. These cars took a bulk of the testing on themselves and a bulk of the torture, which you can see on them. They are brand marked from this. This was the first validation prototype that we have built, a very special car for us. It was the first, let's say, perfectly looking car, which is hard to see now because it was going through many crash tests. And this was the car that we built for Geneva 2020. Uh, and we finished the car. Of course, like always, the guys were working day and night to finish it, put it together. It went on a truck and then COVID canceled Geneva just two days before it opened. Nevertheless, we had a private event. The car was in perfect shape, perfect form, and we, we showed the car there and then used it for lots of different road tests, uh, software development tests, and then in the end, lots of different crash tests. So this car had a rough life, just as these others as well, which are now just monocoques because we were using them for parts. But you can see that, for example, this monocoque went through front crash testing multiple times until uh, we increased the speed every after every crash test, repair the car, increase the speed, repair the car, increase the speed, until the monocoque broke. And then it had side impacts, roof crash test, and the rest, uh, the, the remains are just the bare monocoque, with, which is not usable anymore. Same with the next car, and a bunch of other uh, validation prototypes that were used mostly for crash testing. One really interesting validation prototype is this one. Uh, it's a car that was used for durability testing, so it was running in all different kinds of um, tracks and roads for tens of thousands of kilometers to uh, have an accelerated lifetime, like on rough roads, on super high speed uh, driving, super high speed charging, just to simulate a whole lifetime of the car in a few months or, or in less than a year. And it was the car that I used uh, on my wedding last year. Going from experimental prototype to validation prototype, we changed everything. But going from validation prototype to the next stage, which is pretty serious, we changed some stuff, but more in details, not the full car. Uh, of course, we had a lot of learning from the validation prototype, so we didn't have to change a lot in the pre-series. In pre-series, we built five cars, and these were the famous cars. The cars you saw on Top Gear and many other uh, different uh, journalist test drives. Um, this car was also supposed to be destroyed, 
uh, out of the five cars, luckily we had to destroy just one uh, pre-series car. All of the others will survive. And of course we have lots of plans for them. But for this one was a funny story. The guys told me, oh Mate, we have to uh, crash test this car, uh, which was at that time a beautiful uh, functional car. And I said, well, when we already want to crash it, uh, I'll have some fun with it. So I did a little bit of rally driving around our campus construction site and really didn't care how the car will look like after that. And, you know, properly did some things that probably nobody ever did to a hypercar. Uh, and then a few days later, the guys told me, oh, we figured out a way to do the tests with other cars, so we will not destroy that car. Well, too late. <laughs> so this car had a tough life, uh, but also a fun one. Its brother car, another blue Nevera, was flown onto the Dubrovnik Fortress when we were announcing Bugatti Rimac for the first time. Unfortunately, that car is not here today because it's testing somewhere. This here is the only pre-series car that we had to destroy. This was a full running car just like the others and it went through many different crash tests and the last crash test that we had to go through uh, to get the global certification, European and, and US certification. So we had to destroy it, but for a good cause. This is a really beautiful one. This was mostly used for US certification. You can see that by the US bumper and the, the US reflectors in a beautiful uh, carbon fiber, visible carbon fiber matte finish uh, through Batman car. And this one was also quite special, used um, in, uh, for winter testing amongst many other things. And recently we did a video in Sweden where the car while driving was making a 360. Our test driver, Margut, did that and a lot of people went crazy about that video. So that was quite cool. To some people, this might be just a bunch of prototypes and monocoques that were destroyed in testing. To us, it's four, five years of our lives and endless streams of blood, sweat and tears that took us to get from the initial idea of building a car with amazing performance that would raise the bar, for which many people said it's impossible to do. And maybe five, 10 years ago, it was unthinkable that an electric hypercar will be faster, accelerating and in many aspects better than any combustion engine car. And they are a witness to our journey from the first uh, bucks over the experimental prototypes, over the validation prototypes, all the way now here to serious production. And as this was happening at the same time, the company was growing, the team was growing. We moved from facility to facility, from location to location, uh, went through many transformations. Uh, lots of stuff happened along the way to come to this point where we are now finally and that's what we are going to show you today, our new production building and the first production cars. So this is it, the first production Nevera. This is actually number 000. It will not go to a customer, we'll keep it with us. The car after that is the first customer car. So this is number zero of 150. To you, it might look like just like the other Neveras, like the experimental prototypes or the uh, validation prototypes or the pre-series cars. But to me or, and to people here in the company, everywhere we look, we know how many iterations we had to do, change a millimeter here, a millimeter there, a ply of carbon fiber here, a ply of carbon fiber there, or change the powertrain components, the layouts of different things, the electronics, a million things. Wherever we look, there is a whole story behind every part. And we are so proud to see it finally in this state. We think, it's exactly what we wanted to achieve when we started the project and we are immensely proud of it and can't wait that the customers have the same experience. Almost as important as the car itself is the facility and the process and the people who make it. And that's what we are going to show you now. We are now at our new production line. But no, this is not the Rimac campus. The campus is actually still in construction. It's moving ahead really fast, but it's a huge project. It's the biggest building in Croatia and the biggest investment in Croatia at the moment. So therefore it will still take quite some time until it's done. But until then, we wanted to have another solution. We were looking for a temporary building as we were expanding and running out of space. So I was actually looking in all the different buildings that are available in Zagreb and around Zagreb. And as Croatia doesn't have a lot of industry, I was looking at all kinds of shopping centers, abandoned buildings, uh, old airport terminals, 
you name it, we were looking for, for absolutely everything and choosing the least worst option, which was an old shopping center, like for furniture and stuff like that, that wasn't used for more than 10 years. It was in a terrible state. And we decided to make a temporary facility, just let's invest the minimum. And it looked really terrible. You wouldn't believe how this looked like just eight or nine months ago. And we full throttle refurbished it, completely changed it. And now it's really beautiful location because we want to do things properly, even if it's temporary. But we did it really nicely, so we'll probably stay here as well. Where we are here is the assembly line where everything comes together, but there's lots of stuff happening here. In our original location in Svetanedlia, we still have about 400 people and machining, so the CNC machining of all the different components, the metal parts, the copper parts for the batteries and so on, tooling, uh, so carbon fiber molds for the carbon fiber that we make, jigs and fixtures, and also the carbon fiber production. Here we are producing wiring harnesses upstairs. We have the upholstery of Alcantara and leather. Uh, we are producing our gearboxes here, the inverter, power electronics, chargers, ECUs, infotainment systems, uh, the whole powertrain, uh, the, the battery system, of course, and lots of other parts of the car being made here. So here in Jankomir, in our facility, which is basically in Zagreb, uh, we have now over 500 people working just a couple of months after we have started to come to this location. And uh, of course now the company is over one and a half thousand people scattered around in different locations. Here we have the four station production line for the Nevera. We have chosen a production line setup, not a nest production, which is often used for small volume manufacturers. Even for example, Bugatti has a nest production and not a production line. So we have chosen for a more, let's say, industrial approach, less coach building approach. And this production line is mirrored on the other side with the rolling chassis production side, uh, where we are assembling rolling chassis for other car companies. The production line of the Nevera actually starts before station one. In the assembly line, we have something called station zero, where the monocoque is being prepared for the production. So we are mounting hundreds of different attachment points, mounting points, brackets, and so on onto the monocoque with different kinds of tools and jigs and fixtures. Then uh, we are mounting all the body panels onto the car, making sure the fit and finish is good and perfect. Everything is aligned before then the body components are going to painting and the monocoque goes to painting. And after the paint shop, which is also right here, the monocoque comes to the production line or the assembly line here to station one, where the wiring harness and other smaller bits and pieces are mounted onto the monocoque. After that, the monocoque goes to station two, where the suspension components and the subframes are mounted on the car. Then to station three, where the powertrain is mounted, the battery goes into the monocoque and the car comes to life. So we are uh, commissioning the car, as we call commissioning, making sure that all the hundreds of different components and electronic control units start to talk to each other, work together. It comes to station four, where it gets its body panels and interior before it's then finished. The station four currently is empty because the, the car zero uh, just rolled off this uh, station. And after the car zero, which will stay in our possession, we have car number one, which is the first customer car. Of course, all the customers all around the world are super excited and anxious to see their car finally being finished, to sit in it and drive it and we can't wait to see their reactions of something that we have invested all our lives for so much time and so much effort to make these cars a reality. So we can't wait to see them smile and hopefully burn a lot of rubber with them. That's what we made them for. We want them to be used and not just being beautiful pieces in a garage. So we look so much forward to that. I'm sure you guys will enjoy it as well with all the content that's coming up with these cars being on the road, on tracks and different events all around the world.